Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are Ohio. Carlos Santana's debut in the leadoff spot was a smashing success, becoming the first Indian to homer in his initial leadoff at bat since Joe Carter in 1984. Marlon Byrd soared in with the go-ahead homer in the seventh, while Josh Tomlin and the bullpen combined to close out a series opening win. Now the Indians look for back-to-back -back wins in the Motor City as Corey Kluber seeks win number one next on Sports Time Ohio. A beautiful day in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, where this afternoon at Comerica Park, the Cleveland Indians take on the Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Last night, the Indians beat Detroit in the series opener 2-1. to one. We know it's very difficult to win a low-scoring game in baseball. How difficult, you ask? The last time the Indians won a 2-1 to one game in Detroit against the Tigers, the stadium wasn't even here. It was old Tiger Stadium. Well, they did everything they had to last night. Santana gave them the early lead, the first that bat of the game, and then once the Tigers tied it up, Bird brought the lead right back into the Indians dugout, and the rest was all pitching for Cleveland. Tomlin was outstanding. The bullpen was outstanding. Uh, Cody Allen had to go through the middle part of that lineup. That is how you win two to one ball games. And you know, there comes a point in time in the year where you're going to have to do it. They did it last night, and it started in game one of the road trip. So far this year for Corey Kluber, to quote Yogi Bear, it's been deja vu all over again. Last year, the Indians averaged 3.3 runs of support while Kluber was in the ballgame. This year, they've scored a total of three runs in his three starts. Well, he can't control that. What he can control is some mistake pitches that he made this year. He's given up some bad pitches or big hits at the wrong time. But after he's given them up, he seemed to settle down. In his last start, he gave up three in the first, three in the second, and then he incorporated that slider into his game plan and settled down. So Corey's got to go out here. He does not have good numbers against the Tigers in his career, but he's going to have to settle in and put zeros on the board until the offense can, can settle in. He's looking for his first win this year. He'll be matched up against Anibal Sanchez. He did not pitch against the Tribe last year. Lost in 14. His last win came in 2013. Indian split with the White Sox earlier this year on the road in the division. Big game today because of the Tribe wins guarantees them a series victory against the Tigers. Alan Jensen will join us from the studio when we come back. Plus, we'll go down on the field and hear from Andre not get the latest on the Indians' bullpen situation heading into today's game. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
Indians come in. Three games off the pace in the AL Central, as you were talking about the teams that we'll be watching today. Kansas City topping the standings, 11 and five. White Sox at 11 and six. Then Detroit, just a half game ahead of the Tribe at eight and seven. Then Cleveland at seven and seven, and Minnesota bringing up the rear at five and 12. Looking at the Indians uh, lineup, once again, Carlos Santana working in that leadoff spot in the DH. See how that works out again, worked out well yesterday. Let's go down to the field right now with Andre Knott, who's got the latest on the Indians' bullpen. We know Cody Allen's worked a lot here recently. Is he available today? Uh, he's not going to be available today. It's funny, a week ago we were all talking about exactly how the bullpen wasn't getting a lot of action. And Terry Francona said, don't worry about it. It'll turn around. Brian Shaw most likely will close. Zach McAllister is available despite pitching over the last couple of days. But don't be surprised if Jeff Manship is the first guy out of the bullpen for Terry Francona today. It's funny how things change so quickly, guys, with the bullpen. Cody does feel great. They just don't want to put him out there the third day in a row after throwing 30 pitches when we were back at home. Yeah, I don't blame him. And that's why you have eight guys out of that bullpen. You might, some, sometimes other people have to step up for a game or so, and uh, just the way it happens. Hopefully, you get a good long start from Corey Kluber, and uh, a lot of that you won't have to worry about. Well, Andre did a nice job of, of maintaining concentration while the guys were bombarding him with bubble gum. He, he went, he's a good 20 yards from the dugout, trying to get as far away as he can. And they were still launching it down there at him, trying to knock him off his concentration. No dice. He's a pro. Let's take a look at the Indians starting lineup today for Terry Francona, brought to you by Progressive. Carlos Santana, as I mentioned, in that leadoff spot once again. Jason Kipnis will hit second. Francisco Lindor batting third. Mike Napoli hitting cleanup. He's gone five for 17 so far this year with a runner in scoring position. Then it's Jan Gomes, followed by Jose Ramirez, who gets the start uh, today hitting in the six hole. Then it's Lonnie Chisenhall, Rajay Davis, and Tyler Naquin. And our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher for the Tigers will be Anibal Sanchez. Sanchez is 2-1 on the year, 460. In his last start against Houston, he took the loss. He went five innings, gave up eight hits, five runs, a couple solo home runs, threw 110 pitches at five innings. That's not what he strives for. They, uh, his job is to try and stay out there a little bit longer, but they made him work, and we'll see if the Indians can do that. In nine starts in his career against the Indians, he's four and three. Did not pitch against the Tribe last year. He did pitch against them in 2014. He lost that game. His last win came in August of 2013. So we'll see what the Indians have uh, to offer to Annabelle Sanchez and see if they can get an early lead again tonight. Uh, let's check out the defense behind him today. It'll be Upton in left field. Ghost gets the start in center this afternoon. J.D. Martinez in right. Castellanos is at third base. Romine at shortstop. Kinsler is at second. Cabrera at first. And Jared Saltolamacchia gets the start behind the plate. Adrian Johnson has the plate this afternoon. Ramon DeJesus at first base. Gary Cedars from the crew chief at second. Eric Cooper down at third. We are ready to go. 51 degrees under sunny skies. That air is still cool. But the breeze looks like it will be carrying out toward center field once again here today. Annabelle Sanchez into the windup, and today's first pitch has popped up. Left center field. Justin Upton will make the catch. One pitch, one out. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Make Sanchez work. He averages 19 and a half, so basically 20 pitches per inning on the year. Thus, he's only averaged five and a third innings per start. And for Corey Kluber, stay out of the middle of the plate against this Tigers lineup. Jason Kipnis steps in. And this has been a familiar theme, unfortunately, for the Indians this year. And that's Jason Kipnis coming to the plate with nobody on base. This is 39 out of 54 at bats now this year for Kipnis with nobody on base in front of him. One ball, one strike. Well, it's going to be interesting to see uh, when Michael Brantley comes back. He'll go into that number three hole. Who will the leadoff hitter will be? Will it be Jason Kipnis? And they move, uh, you know, Lindor into that second hole, which I would imagine would happen. And that could change here in the near future. Yep. 
Michael scheduled to play back to back games last night and today and then to reevaluate see where he's at on Sunday how he's feeling and possibly we'll see him in Minnesota on Monday Kipnis follows that pitch back. Sanchez a guy that's been tougher on left handers throughout his career last se uh, season lefties hit just 217 off him he's got that good change up they'll cut it inside to him and throw the fastball and right he's hit 291 off him last year Kipnis lines it right back at Sanchez just by his glove and into center field for a one out single. Boy, a good swing there. Kip, uh, delivers that ball right where it came from right back up the middle. That ball stayed on the inner part of the plate. You see where Salta Lamaki had to reach back for it. And Kipnis lined it into center field. So the first hit in the first inning. And one on one out now for Francisco Lindor. He has seven hits in his last six games. One for three in the series opener last night. Takes outside and low ball one. Quick throw to first drives Kipnis back to the back. Jason three for three on stolen base attempts thus far. Infield straight up double play depth for Lindor. Outfield swung around toward left. And Sanchez continues to pay close attention to Jason Kipnis. Lindor checks low and away. He did not go on the appeal and it's 2-0. One of the reasons that Sanchez averages so many pitches per inning and one of the reasons why he really only averages about five innings per start. It's not necessarily a case of nibbling but he has a lot of movement. Think about Fausto Carmona when he was with the Indians and when you've got that kind of movement if the catcher sets up to one side of the plate or the other with the natural movement alone it's not going to end up on the plate. So it's not so much that they're trying to get him to be more aggressive, but you know, you've got to almost let the natural movement take care of itself. Lindor with a patient at bat, though, draws the walk. Well, that's a case then if you're the catcher, you want to sit down the middle of the plate. You don't set on e either edge and just let the natural movement uh, take care of itself. That's what Jack Morris was saying before the game, Rick, the, the former Tiger great and Minnesota twin, Toronto Blue Jay, tremendous pitcher in his day. He said, you know, when you've got that kind of movement, I'd rather have the catcher just set in the middle of the plate and let the ball go to whichever side. He said, if you set up on the corner with the movement alone, it's going to end up off the plate. Well, unless a pitcher says, I want you to sit out there, maybe because they're trying to pick up that target and then they're trying to gauge their movement. But it makes sense that you just sit in the middle and let it go. Well, Sanchez again, falling behind a familiar theme with this right hander. But he tests your patience as a hitter because of that, too. Mike Napoli following it back out of play. Well, that's where, as a hitter, you want to remain patient. You know, early in the ball game, you want to see what he can throw for strikes early and sit on it and do little things like that. Two on with one out, and Mike Napoli trying to deliver early, and he's done a nice job. He's 5 for 17 with a runner in scoring position. He's picked up a hit in 10 of the 13 games he played. Cuts and misses there. You know, the great thing about baseball is that you can take a game like he had last night where you go 0 for 4 and 4 strikeouts, and you've got to file it away quickly because there's a the next game to play the very next morning. That's the beautiful thing about <laughs> baseball. If he had to sit and think about that for a week, it'd be tough, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. That's the nice thing. You come back the very next day and have a chance, and that's all in the past. Oh, he Locked takes a called third strike, two down.
Kessler look here? It's, it's just a fastball, and I think it might be a little cut fastball. And it comes back a little bit on the plate on the inside. It's a great pitch to hit, too close to take, and he locked up Mike Napoli. You know, I think we saw that same thing happen to Napoli in the sixth inning last night where he was maybe looking for an off-speed pitch and a fastball right down the heart of the plate. He ended up taking it for a called third strike. That'll bring up Jan Gomes with two on and two out. And Gomes fouls it out of play. Even though he was 0 for 4 with three punch outs last night, in his career he has swung the bat, uh, the bat well against this Tigers franchise, a career 289 hitter against Detroit. Up and away, and it will even the count of one and one. Venezuelan born Anibal Sanchez. In his fifth season with the Tigers. Back out of play. Three years ago, he led the American League with a 2.57 ERA. Yeah, he had that great year where he didn't give up a whole lot. And the very next year, he was season was marred by injury problems. Boy, there's a ton of left center field wide open. Gomes shoots it towards shallow center field. Goes coming out. He won't get it. It'll drop in front of him. Kipnis will score on his way to third as Lindor. Jan Gomes delivers the clutch two-out RBI single in the Indians. For the second game in a row, we'll play from in front. Well, that's what you need, a nice two-out base hit. Didn't hit it all that hard, but placed it beautifully. Gets it in front of Ghost in center field. Sort of jammed himself a little bit right there. but It fell right in front of where he was playing. And he wanted to come home, but realized he didn't have a chance with two outs. He wasn't going to get Kipnis. He couldn't make the throw to third because of the speed on the bases. So a nice two-out base hit. Indians score again in the first. Well, and a big one for Jan Gomes, who had a tough time with runners in scoring position a year ago, but off to a good start now, four out of 13 this year. What? Jose Ramirez getting the start at third base today. And the switch hitter bats with Indians at the corners and two down. And he takes two quick strikes. Boy, from that vantage point, it looks like there's so much open space out there. Fouled back, and this is a spacious outfield here at Comerica Park. A lot of ground to cover for the speedster in center field, Anthony Goes. Justin Upton way over in left field near the line. Trying to take that opposite field slap hit away. And Ramirez fights it off. Again, another sunny day here so that you can have some problems in the outfield or the infield here. I think earlier in the day it starts in left field. That 0 2 pitch in the dirt, nicely blocked by Salta Lamacchio with Lindor down at third base. Frankie was watching intently to see if that ball maybe gets away from Salta Lamacchio. It did not, he has to hold. Well, that's something now. Now, if you're Gomes and you're on first base, and all base runners today with Sanchez on the mound, he has three wild pitches already, and he will bounce a few of them. That change up and breaking pitch down in the dirt, you have to be heads up. Just missed inside. And it's two and two now for Jose Ramirez. Throws that front hit fastball to try and get some movement back in off the plate. It's a good pitch. He might have thought he had one there, but it was a little inside. And the 2-2 goes by Sanchez into center field, a base hit. Lindor will score. Gomes headed to third, and back-to-back two-out RBI singles 
And the Indians have a two to nothing lead. Boy, nice at bat for Ramirez. He was down on the count 0 2, worked it back to even. He bangs one right back through the box. Yeah, right out in front of home plate, but it goes right back up the middle when Sanchez couldn't flag it down. Gets into the outfield, so the Indians continue. Three hits in the inning, two runs on the board, and they're not done yet. Now is a chance for Lonnie Chisenhall. Lonnie trying to get his season on track. That'll be a good time to run, too, for Ramirez at first base. With two outs, give Lonnie a chance for that hole early. Tigers thinking along the same lines. Ramirez bluffing a move towards second base, and Chisenhall takes a strike. Yeah, it's almost like uh, Sanchez is trying to quick pitch over there. He throws to first and then really comes set, and boom, fires it right to the plate. Another quick throw to first, but Ramirez back with a dive. Ramirez takes off. The throw down to second is in the center field. The Indians will get another run. Gomes comes home. Ramirez goes to third. And that's the chance you take when you throw through with that runner at third base. Salt to Lamacchia's throw well off the mark. Really nothing that Romine could do. He tried to get to the ball, but it sails in the center, and the Indians take advantage. That's why I like the uh, aggressiveness. You already have two runs. There's two outs. You, you, you keep the pressure on the defense, and he throws one into center field and gives the Indians another run. So you certainly take it. The stolen base for Ramirez, the error on Salt to Lamacchia. It's now... 3-0. And Lonnie fouls that back out of play. And it count as a ball and two strikes. Now Sanchez deals. And up high. Two and two. Total opposite start of Kluber uh, last time out when he was facing the Mets. What happened? He came out in the, the three runs before he could even get back into the dugout. Well, now he's going to be given a three spot before he goes out to the rubber. 2-2. Two -two. Up and away, full count. And remember, in his first three starts this year, they'd scored three total, total three. runs of support. Right. So they've already given him three before he's thrown a pitch here today. And the payoff to Chisenhall is grounded towards second base. Easy play for Kinsler, and the inning is over. A 31-pitch inning for Anibal Sanchez, and the Indians jump him for a three spot. Now the Tigers are coming to bat when we come back.
lead. Bottom of the first, let's take a look at the Tigers starting lineup for manager Brad Osmus here today. He's got Ian Kinsler leading it off, riding a 10-game hitting streak. Then Justin Upton in the two-hole, Miguel Cabrera bats third. Victor Martinez, J.D. Martinez, Nick Castellanos in the middle. Then it's Jared Salta, Lamacchia, Andrew Romine, and Anthony Goes rounding it out. Our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, Corey Kluber, today. His fourth start, looking for his first win. Well, the Indians gave him three early, so he's he's got to like that already. In his career, just two and six against the Detroit Tigers. Last year, he was 0-1 in two starts, and that loss came in this ballpark, but he didn't pitch badly. Ian Kinsler stands in to lead it off, and he takes ball one. Out of play to even the kill. I mentioned his last start. Remember that bright sunshine in Cleveland where in the second inning, Rajay Davis, who was playing center in that game, Lost a couple of balls in the sun that cost him three yeah. runs. But he did give up three in the first before that happened. Missed inside, two and one. Well, Ian Kinsler already leads the American League with nine multi-hit games. Broke that string. He had four consecutive going into last night's game. Out of play. You know, you mentioned it last year, Rick, when we faced the Tigers early in the year, Kinsler was using the other side of the diamond. He was hitting everything to right and right center field. Got him off to a great start. Well, yeah, he was using that part of the field, not trying to do too much. He can get pull happy. But, boy, he, he can cover home plate if he wants to. He's got, a, he's got good power. He's got a good eye. There's a pitch down there, a little low. Last night, that might have been a strike. That was a pitch that yeah. was called a number of times. Yes, it, yes, it was. Now the 3-2. And Kinsler pops it back out of play. Nice catch. Fan in the upper deck front row. Fair hand grab over the glass. Again, the 3-2, and it's strike three called. A little wrinkle in it, and Kensler, you could see his front side sort of buckled, and it locked him up. This will be our Circle K strikeout first hit of the game. It's a nice cutter, a cut fastball from Clover on the 3-2 pitch. Kinsler gave up on it, he realized that. Normally, you look for that pitch away. That one started at him and sort of locked him up. So they get the leadoff hitter. It's, uh, I think, very important, Corey. Have a 1 2 3 inning here in the first. That'll bring up Justin Upton. And Upton looks at ball one. Bound right back to the screen to even it up. Justin Upton has not driven in a run since April 12th. Now, granted, a lot of times when you're batting in the, the two spot, there might not be a ton of RBI opportunities. One one, fouled right back to the screen. You know what he did? He had an RBI last night. That's what I get Off for Tomlin with two outs. Back when they scored in the sixth inning. Yep. Oh, that one gave him a shave up and in. I think you know what's coming now. Pitch like that, you would think the slider down and away with two strikes. Fouled back. So that was his first RBI last night since April 12th. 
And the 2 2. Boy, he just did get a piece of that. Doing a nice job just staying alive. Tough for a right hander to hit those pitches down and away from Kluber, but that's the key. If you can foul them off, don't pull off them and stay alive until hope the guy makes a mistake on you if you're the hitter. Kluber's 2 2. Swung on and missed. He struck him out with a good fastball. And there are two down here in, in the first. Let's check out that Indians defense behind Kluber this afternoon. Brought to you by Jeep. It'll be Davis out in left field today. Naquin in center. Chisholm Hall over in right. Ramirez gets the start at third. Lindor is at short. Kipnis at second. Napoli at first. Gomes behind the plate. So here is Miguel Cabrera. The four time batting champion looks at ball one. Indians held him without a hit last night. And he's 0 for his last nine overall. Yeah, he's been slumping over the last five games. That's something we rarely see when we face this guy. So hopefully you can take advantage of it and he stays quiet. Stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. Those are numbers Corey Kluber probably didn't want to take a look at today. Well, he won't be able to see him where he's from. <laughs> he just has to make a couple of pitches. But it, great numbers off Kluber. Good fastball found the outside corner. And it's one and two. Tomlin did a good job on him last night, making him conscious of the inside part of the plate. You know, it just kept him off balance all night long. Man, the one two. And close pitch just missing two and two. I thought uh, Cody Allen did a tremendous job facing Cabrera in a one run game in the ninth last night. Got him to pop one up into foul ground. Yeah, the, uh, you remember he came out of the gate and had a 2-0 uh, count on him as well. Yeah. Weekly bounce to short. Lindor can take his time, makes a good throw, and Corey Kluber works a 1-2-3 first inning, striking out a pair of Tigers, and the Indians have a 3 to nothing lead. Second inning here at Comerica Park in Detroit. We're going to call this the party booth now. <laughs> Austin Carr is with us. How are you? All right, guys. Good to see you both. Mr. How you Cavalier, doing? big uh, series 3-0 lead now for the Cavs, huh? Yeah, it seems like uh, playoff time has become uh, a time where the, the team seems to be geared up a little bit better than they are during the regular season. Well, last night was certainly a well-played game as Miguel yeah. Cabrera takes – the foul ball off the bat of Rajay Davis for out number one. So game four tomorrow night. But uh, what will be the 
key for the Cavs to put them away. Obviously, Pistons are going to throw everything at them. Yeah, I think the first half is going to be key because, you know, granted they're a young team and they are full of energy and want to go at it, but I think the Cavs pretty much have taken the life out of them, but you got to you got to do it on the court, you know. So I think the first half, we come out strong in the first half. I think that'll, that'll kind of take the, the sting out of, of what they're trying to do. Come you on. having fun? Oh, having a great time. I mean, it, it's been super because the team, it, it, again, I think they started out last season always looking at the carrot. This year they started out with the carrot, and it took them a while. I think now that they have the carrot, the championship dangling there again, you can see – the, the focus is really is, is there now. In oh, every play, every time, they're focused. You know, they're starting to deal with each other. Or oh, as far as constructive criticism, you understand what that's yeah, about, don't right. you? And and so, it, when that happens, you seem to come together a lot quicker, and they're starting to come fast now. Well, the goal. Let's get back to Golden State if you can, and if they right. get there and and win the whole shooting match. It's, you're, you'll be healthier this year. You have the boys, Love and, and Kyrie, and everybody together. And that's that's what everybody's intrigued about, to be a healthy team going all the way through the playoffs and getting another shot at Golden State. I mean, even though we want to take it one series at a right. time. Right, Because you can't really get that far ahead of yourself. But uh, in, in the back, that's the elephant in the closet is uh, getting back to the finals. That would be fun. Yes, it would be. In the meantime, I'm having a good time watching – the Indians do their thing. I mean, last night was a great game. Well, you you brought us in here. We won a nice two to one game. We started yes. out with three runs in the first. You're not going anywhere. You're staying here. For, cancel that tea time. You're, you're staying with us. I mean, this is like wow. I mean, it's amazing. Get to the ballpark, and you know, all of a sudden, you know, because I used to fancy myself as a baseball player back in the day, and I was a catcher, left-handed hitting catcher, and. Uh, Man, this ballpark, the chalk lines, man, it just makes me want to play baseball. <laughs> well, we're going to send you out there. You're going to pinch hit uh, next no, but, I, but the only problem, I can't run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, Notre Dame, when you were at Notre Dame, any, any shot of going out for the baseball team when either? Strictly hoops. No, I tried it. Did you? I tried it, but uh, I broke my hand, and they told they, they, I was told, you, you're on a basketball scholarship. <laughs> yeah. That's... You're not here to play baseball, so they kind of got me out of that, that, that thank you. But I wanted to play baseball really bad. How's that for a seeing eye base hit for Carlos Santana? Perfectly placed between Kinsler and Martinez. It's amazing how they've started out. All the base hits have dropped in front of all the outfielders. I mean, it's been a great, great uh, start to the game. We need game. you to get your telestrator out and do, do some uh, analyzing <laughs> for us here. I call that the baseball gods being with you early. You know, but, but uh, watching Kluber, I love watching him. Yeah, he's fun to watch. He's, he's fun. He, he's very deliberate, but, man, when the ball leaves his hand, it's, it's coming. And he's got a lot of junk on it, too. Hey, uh, obviously LeBron James is a tremendous superstar and a great player, but who do you enjoy watching? Who are some guys on the Cavaliers team that are fun well, to watch for you. Well, I, you know, I kind of like, now that they all are in unison now and play, I like them all because they all have different attributes. But uh, Tristan Thompson, I love watching him play because. He gets in there and bangs. Yeah, I mean, he? like last night, he had some, some key second chance opportunities that really, during the playoffs, they really kill a team. And uh, it, 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 it's just fun watching him play because. It's all, he always fights three or four guys getting those rebounds, and he always seems the one coming up with them. Well, we enjoy watching you. Good luck the rest of the way. Have fun Thank tomorrow. You. That was a quick end. I know. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Right, Austin guys, Carr, Mr. You. Cavalier, you can see it tomorrow when the Cavs try to close out the Pistons. Go Tribe!
And as we go to the bottom of the second inning, I think if Austin didn't have a tee time, he'd have loved to have stayed the whole game. Uh, but he would be more than welcome. He's fun. Isn't that Wouldn't interesting that he wanted? He tried to play baseball at Notre Dame. I wish you. I wish I would have had his shot, and I would have tried to play in the NFL. I mean, the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> You guys could have swapped. He could have come out and played center field. You could have gone that's and played what he should have done. guard. What's he doing behind the plate? The tools of ignorance. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how you break your hand. Well, that's surprising to me because I would have never guessed that he would have been a catcher of uh, all things. I, see, I wish we would have had time to talk to him. Now, when, when we see him maybe later, we'll get a chance. I, I got to talk to him about that. <laughs> that's some bad coaching on somebody. Yeah, so, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Victor Martinez with a 2-0 count. And he hits one hard to right center field, but Lonnie Chisinau was playing over in the gap. And he's got the catch for out number one. Good defensive positioning there. And last night, Victor hit a rocket late in the ball game. And Jason Kipnis made an easy oh, yeah. play on it in the outfield grass. Statcast had that ball coming off the bat at 109 miles an hour. Victor said, what else is new with that shift? I think, well, you know, it gets frustrating for some of those guys. But you see, well, it's frustrating, but he's a guy that can beat you the other way and go to left field, you know, and with the game on the line, if you're down a run, when he gets in his mind, he wants to try to pull a ball or hit a homer, he's going to pull it. And he may hit it hard, but you're hitting it right into the teeth of the defense. Yep. Our Levin Furniture player profile shows that J.D. Martinez has become a different player since coming to the Tigers. I mean, think about it. You talk about whether it was just good fortune, probably a little bit of both. Great scouting and some luck involved as well. That but Houston just designated this guy, and the Tigers picked him up. I think anybody could have had him. Right, but I'm saying obviously there's some good scouting, but that's some good fortune too because that ball's rifled in the left field. As Martinez is aboard with the Tigers' first hit, I don't think anybody could have said, seen Jay. I don't care who you are as a scout. You couldn't have said, oh, this guy's well, going to hit almost 300. Well, he's going to win a silver slugger. He's going to be an all-star. No, you don't You don't put the numbers on him, but you know he can play. And Clarkie, their third base coach, was in Houston. Yeah. And he's the one that had him, so it wasn't a scout. He knew him as a, as a player, as an individual. And he might have told Dabrowski or whoever was up here that, that to go get this guy because I think he's talented enough. You don't project numbers on him, but you know the guy can play a little bit. And boy, what a difference he has made. Nick Castellanos riding an eight game hitting streak. Takes low ball one. Castellanos with a dozen hits in his eight-game hit streak. He had a base hit last night, didn't he? Just keep keep his oh, hands back or kept his body it. back, I mean, and, and the ball was down in the dirt and hit about a nine iron to right mm -hmm. field, but it was really a nice job of hitting on his part. Well, when you're going well, those things uh, tend to fall your way. Right at the third baseman. Ramirez goes to second. There's one Kipnis on the turn. Perfect feed to Napoli. And the Indians go around the horn to end the inning. We've played two in Detroit. It's the Indians three and the Tigers nothing.
as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Light. Francisco Lindor in the on-deck circle getting himself ready for his second trip to the plate this afternoon against Anibal Sanchez. He walked in the first and came around to score for the Indians. He'll lead off here in the third with Mike Napoli and Jan Gomes to follow. Does it get me over curveball, strike one. Washington quickly out in front of Minnesota today. Two to nothing. They're in the third inning. Our buddy Dick Bramer of the Twins sent out a social media message today that Irvin Santana will miss his next start for the Twins. They've called up Tyler Duffy to start in place of him. There's a base hit in the right field for Lindor. And the Indians have their leadoff man aboard for the first time today. Well, good job by Lindor. He hits that ball. It's a pitch down and away. Looked like it might have been a changeup. He's able to pull into the hole. Cabrera takes two steps, and it's by him into right field. So Lindor on the base. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this running game uh, with Saul Tolomaki behind the plate after his first throw. Keep the pressure on. Mike Napoli out on strikes his first time up. Well, he would have had a yeah. tremendous jump if he kept going. He took a big couple of steps and then immediately stopped. And he had the right pitch, too, with a curveball. Oh, boy, that was perfect. He had it timed just perfectly. Sometimes it's too good for you as a base runner, and you quit because you think he's not going to throw it home. Now watch, the next time he comes set, he'll, he'll come to the plate quickly. Paying attention, much like what Verlander does. Throw over, throw over, throw over. Up high, 2-0. and oh. Perhaps Lindor is just under his skin enough that he's missed on the first two pitches to Napoli. Sometimes as a pitcher, the, the, the base runner will make you rush your delivery, and you'll be upstairs, and that's exactly what that pitch was, was high. Lindor takes off. Napoli swings and misses, and that throw gets away, and Lindor will hold right there. Nice job of backing up the play by Andrew Roman. Keep the running shoes on, boys. Right now, you're, you're going to be getting into Salta Lamacchia's head. Second stolen base. Good job, and the throw was short hop. The other one he threw was into center field, wide right. So now you get the man with nobody out in scoring position. Beautiful. Napoli shoots one in the right field, a base hit. Lindor around third, he'll get the stop sign. Good throw by J.D. Martinez to the cutoff man, but the Indians are right back in business with runners at first and third and nobody out. See, that that, that situation makes Napoli better. He, he consciously tried to take it that way, and he had a nice pitch to do it, a, a pitch elevated. But he didn't try to overswing it. You know, a lot of times you'll see Mike swing through a pitch. This one he stayed on trying to move the runner, and he got the base set. So uh, that'd be a pretty good... Uh, Way to approach your at bat every time you go up there. Man on second, nobody out. Well, he doesn't get the RBI, but it's another hit with a runner in scoring position, too, for Napoli. So you keep the train moving, you keep the pressure on the pitcher. You don't get the RBI, but you, you, you do your job moving up the third. Jan Gomes had an RBI with a runner in scoring position his first time up. And he sends a high fly ball, deep left field. Upton's back. He's out of room, it's out of here. 
Jan Gomes with a three run homer and the Indians are now in front six to nothing. Second home run of the year for Gomes. He's got four runs batted in on the afternoon. Boy, that was a majestic home run off the bat of Jan Gomes. And you want to talk about a pretty swing. Watch this again. Hmm. Is that a change of coming down and in, down into uh, Gomes' nitro zone? And hit it, got it deep. Another three run inning for the Indians. So they're in good shape here early in the game. Now a ground ball to Ian Kinsler. And he'll retire Jose Ramirez one away. So three in the first, now three more here in the third. Let's take a look at that pitch that he hits it out of the ballpark. Yeah, that's something slow. That's, I think, a changeup. Boy, but did you see how he just waited back, didn't jump at it, just a nice, smooth, easy swing. That's how it usually happens. Mm -hmm. Lonnie swings and misses. See, he didn't even uh, stride. He kept that front foot down, never picked it up. Just his weight shift and the weight transfer. Now, how many times have you heard since you started playing baseball, when you swing too hard, you try to hit home runs, usually bad things happen. You just put a nice smooth swing on and the ball jumps. Now Lonnie ropes one deep right center field. That's in the alley. That's headed all the way to the wall. And Chisenhall will crawl into second base. He'll hit and turn and burn, and he'll go in easily with a one-out triple. My goodness, the Indians teeing off against Sanchez here in inning number three. Their second triple of the year, and Chisenhall gets his second hit of the year, a ball out over the plate that gives him swinging room and into the gap in right center field. This is the triples ballpark when you can go gap to gap, and he's not even going to hesitate, cruise into third base, goes in, or he slides even though didn't need to. Rick, that almost looked like the same pitch. It was a change up, I think, away. Yeah. Yes, in that zone. Left-hander Kyle Ryan getting up in the Detroit bullpen. That changeup is not going down and biting like it normally does. It's staying up a little bit. So, it, and they tattooed him. Yeah, I mean, the hitters, give them credit, man. They, they've done the damage, but he's, instead of going down, it's sort of almost like a flat sinker, but it's a changeup, so it's less speed. But yeah. the, the Indians are already with eight hits. And the Tigers have to bring the infield in. And it's the former Tiger, Rajay Davis, who swings at the first pitch and pops it out of play. Rajay fouled out to first base his first time up. Doesn't want to do that again here. He wants to get that run home from third. Now, one of our keys to the game, we talked about trying to make Sanchez work. And that pitch count, close to 60 already. So, came in averaging almost 20 pitches per inning. And what do you know, this next one will be number 60 here in the third inning. Yeah. Taking a long time. Davis not asking for time, but the Tigers finally do. Rajay has hit in seven straight games, going 10 for his last 31. And he's got an eight game hitting streak and an RBI to boot. And the Indians now lead it seven to nothing. And that's probably it. Oh boy, Brad Osmus couldn't have gotten out of the dugout any faster. I'm not sure Davis was at first base yet before Osmus came out of the Detroit dugout to remove Sanchez from the game. Nice short line drive stroke, taking him the opposite way, doing some more damage, and boy, Corey Kluber, he went from rags to riches here in a matter of a game. <laughs> You're not a kidding. So Anibal Sanchez is out. The Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made for left-hander Kyle Ryan. He's coming on when we come back.
Corinthians out to a big early lead, seven to nothing. And now left-hander Kyle Ryan out of the Detroit bullpen working for the sixth time this year. In six innings of work, he has not walked a batter and he has struck out a couple, but the opposition batting 292 against him, so he's given up some hits. Now 24 year older, spent time between Detroit and Toledo last year. Made six starts for the Tigers, went two and four. Right now, you're just trying to put some zeros on the board and hold it close and get out of this inning because they hammered Annabelle Sanchez. Two and a third innings, nine hits, seven runs to this point. Naquin follows it back out of play. Yeah, I'm not sure, you know, if Kyle Ryan, you know, uh, profiles as a long man as much as Brad Awesome is thinking, you know, if we got a lefty in here, maybe get us out of the end and keep it, keep it right here, maybe we have a fighting chance. Rajay a short lead at first. Naquin takes, and it's two and one. Indians with three in the first and then a three-run homer here in the third by Jan Gomes. And sometimes you see a home run and sort of kills the rally, but the Indians, after a ground out, a triple and then another RBI and knock to send Sanchez to the showers. Yeah, I mean, they have a nice crowd this afternoon. It was a little cool and chilly last night. And with the basketball game, not as many fans, but it's uh, these fans are in shock right now. Snap throw over, but Rajay back, or rather, uh, yeah, Rajay back with a dive, looking for his sixth steal of the year. He's been successful five out of seven. Throw to first, Rajay was off, and the throw down, close play, and they got him. Saying he came off the bag. I, I bet he did. It looked like he got his arm in, and then he, you know, a lot of times when he goes in head first, he slides and gets that foot on the bag. But I think his hand, the left one, where he wears that protective padding, came off the bag. I think he beat the throw from Cabrera. There it comes. It tagged him, and the watch. He, the hand comes off the bag, and he still applied the tag to the leg. So that's why. I, I think he was safe originally. Terry Francona's taking a look into the dugout to see if this is a play they want to review. And you know what, there's what happened. The hand came off, perhaps, and Kinsler had their, or rather, uh, Roman had the bag blocked with his foot. That's what happens when you go in uh, face first. Hands. Naquin sends a fly ball deep to left. Back is up, Dan, and he can't make the play. It's gonna drop right in front of the wall, and I'm not sure if Upton may have had trouble with the sun at the last moment. Because it looked, Rick, like he just sort of lost it. And Tyler Naquin with a double. Yeah, that ball carried very well. And we said it's a tough sun field, and especially in left field early. Yeah, he, I, right now, not knowing his surroundings. This is a, a very spacious outfield. And that ball hit on the track with about three or four feet to spare. He has the glasses on, but boy, if you don't get back there in a hurry to and, and adjust from the wall, back to the field, you're in trouble. Well, how often do you see this? We're in the third inning, and all nine Indians hitters have a, one hit in the game. Well, you never see that. At least one hit. Gomes has two. Carlos Santana, who singled his last time up. And he's got a base hit down the left field line. That's going to bring home Naquin. And Santana will head to second base. He's got an RBI double. Boy, oh boy, the Indians have their hitting shoes on here today. Santana has two hits. And that's the seventh hit in the inning for the Indians. Well, every, you know, it started out the game there. Everything was blooped in and finding the spots, but now they're hitting ropes all over this ballpark. 
They have a homer, a triple, two doubles. They have 11 hits and eight runs. This is turning into a laugher now for the Indians, and that's something you need after a nice two to one game last yeah. night. Now's the time to get that offense on track, get up there and take some good swings. Boy, and Redbird says the Indians with a runner in scoring position today, six out of eight already. And they hit for the cycle in the third inning. Kipnis takes its low and away. Two balls, no strikes. The ninth man to bat in the inning. Three and zero. Oh. Might as well send Kluber up and get him some, uh, get the blood flow and let him hit next. <laughs> now sometimes pitchers have been known if the inning goes too long, they'll go into the batting cage and maybe just make some throws well, to stay loose. Where were we in spring training? Wasn't it Salazar that went out there and started throwing or getting? No, we were in Tampa. They yeah, had a long right. inning. Yeah. And he went down on the field and he was throwing and getting loose in Tampa. Jason Kipnis draws a walk, and the Indians have now batted around here in the third inning as Francisco Lindor will bat for the second time. Lindor started the inning with a base hit, and then he stole second. Mike Napoli singled him to third, and Gomes hit the three-run homer. And then the Indians have just kept on hitting since. The only batter that's been retired was Jose Ramirez. On a ground out to second. Lindor pops one straight up. On the infield, Kinsler backpedaling, and the second baseman makes the catch. So that'll end the inning. But what an inning it was for the drive. Jan Gomes' three-run jolt highlights it. Indians up 8 to nothing. Well, Christmas came in April for Corey Kluber today. An eight-run outburst. And the Tribe is pretty much money in the bank when they get Kluber at least four runs of support while he's pitching. How about when they score him eight? <laughs> Double that. Have they ever scored him eight? This might be a first. Well, Who knows? I, I remember one time they, they had a, a game where they just, it was like this, but. 
he can save some. But it's nice. It's nice to see he can go out there and relax and just settle in a little bit. The 0 1. And Salta Lamacchia pops it back out of play. In there for a strike, and that is that. Salta Lamacchia, third strikeout victim of Corey Kluber today, one away. Let's go down to Andre, who has more on the Indians' right-hander, Corey Kluber. You know, with pitchers, we talk about so much about mile per hour, guys. And with Corey Kluber having some struggles early this year, some were looking at his mile per hour numbers from the last two years, and it's, it's a tick down. Interesting. Mickey Calloway says, look, it's not about mile per hour with Corey Kluber. He said in his last start, yeah, he was throwing 91, 92 early in the game. He says, but his fastball got better once he started throwing his curveball and got more depth to his fastball. Basically, Mickey said, stop looking at the mile per hour and look right. at what the stuff is actually doing. And I think today you see that. Well, and you know what? He's going to have eight runs. Nobody will talk a thing about any mile per hour or any pitch sequences. He can go out there and relax a little bit and just be free and easy and not have to worry about it. Oh, Napoli had one right. go right through the wickets. Yes, he did. And on his way to second base is Andrew Romine. Beats the throw. I would assume that'll be ruled an error, but we'll have to wait and see what the official score oh, says. Yeah, it's, it went right through his legs. I mean, he was down on it. Look at he makes the jump, and then he just never really got the glove down. So right between the legs, that'll be an error. He's been so good over there at first base. That's the one ball that's hit at you you would expect him to get. He's made plays going to his left, going to his right. Been very good, but. And it is hey. ruled an error. Oh, yeah, it just happens. Anthony goes to the plate. That's the 10th error for the Tribe this year. I wanted to point out, I was, I'm, I'm really impressed Andre did that hit. He mentioned it three different times. He didn't use the term velocity once. He went the mile per hour. That's old school. I love it. <laughs> Ramo right at Kipnis. He's got the nice hop, flips it over, two down. And you know, Rick, the other thing I wanted to mention, I was talking to Jack Morris. You weren't talking about Kluber, and I said to him that. Corey's not the kind of guy who would ever come out, and he's not going to complain. He's not going to talk about the lack of run support. But I asked Jack, I said, you know, you've been there many times. It has to creep into your mind, doesn't it? And he said, you know, where it plays on a pitcher's mind or in your, your subconscious is that you can't make mistakes or you're trying to maybe be too fine. And he said, when you get some support, when you get some run scored, he said, you just kind of go out there and throw. Yeah. You're not thinking about, I've got to execute this pitch perfectly here. You just kind of let your stuff do what it does naturally. So he said, it, it's not that you walk around thinking about it, but it's there. It's sort of like well, the, the elephant in the room, if you will. The, the runs let you relax. And that's how that you have to play is relaxed. You, you, not afraid to make a mistake, you know, at all times. Oh, geez, I have to be. You, I, this is, you can't be perfect in this game. There's room for error. It's a game of failure. So, you know, you've got to be allowed to fail sometimes and still not have to worry about it. Exactly. Let him hit it. Here it is. Let, yes. Go ahead. Try and hit when, it. When, when a pitcher's aggressive and he doesn't really, it's not like he doesn't care, but free and easy and I don't care where it goes, things seem to work out. It's like a hitter, too. When you go up into home plate and you get in the batter's box, and you're, you're not worried that you have to get a hit. You look for the baseball. You keep it simple. And everything seems to, to go off of that. And then there's times out there where you, it seems like they have 25 fielders out there when you're hitting. Or there's only two fielders if you're pitching. We're sort of like that game, and we it's what the Indians are having here today, where you say you get that first big hit with a runner in scoring position, and everybody just sort of relaxes instead of gripping, right. and all of a sudden now you get a bunch of hits. I think this team right now early in the year, you know, it, Everybody, everybody's having a tough time scoring with runners in scoring position throughout the league for the most part. But when you can get that first hit early, 
it takes a lot of pressure off everybody else and they just relax. In comes Chisenhall, makes the catch, the error does no damage. And after three, the Indians lead it eight to nothing. At Bad App, you can stay connected all season long with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball, on your smartphone and tablet. Mike Napoli leading off here in the fourth inning, singled and scored in the third. And he takes it a little bit high. Chopped to short. And Andrew Romine's throw is in time. Napoli has retired one away. And we'll send it back to the studio for an in game update. Here's Al Pulaski. Thanks, Al. Coco Crisp just uh, knocked in a run for Oakland in that ball game. Jan Gomes has driven in four for the Indians here today. A two-out RBI single in the first and a three-run homer in the third. Chopper to short. Big hop for Romine. Two down. <laughs> Jose Ramirez, he had a two out RBI single in the first inning. Missed outside. Popped in the air to center. Shallow dropping. And a diving catch made by Anthony Goes. Boy, 
That was a sensational effort by Goes on a dead sprint, had to lay out. And he steals a hit away from Jose Ramirez to end the fourth inning. By a score of eight to nothing as we go to the fourth inning, Justin Upton will be leading off, batting in the two spot for Detroit. And with more on that story, let's go down to Andre Knott. It's just interesting how we talk about batting orders and where guys hit. Justin Upton on the season, who's struggling a little bit, is hitting 428 right now when he leads the inning off, but he's batting second. And some in Motown have complained, why would you give a guy that type of money to bat second in a lineup? Are we to the point where we need to stop looking at where we put these guys and just let them play? I mean, where else are you going to put Upton in this lineup? Well, exactly right. When you have Cabrera Martinez Martinez there, and he might have been a number four hole hitter for another team. Well, you know, you you, you have to put him somewhere. And second is going to be the spot. So what are you going to do? Well, you think you put him there so he can get a lot of fastballs in front of Cabrera yes. Martinez, right? What? Yes, when he starts hitting, they won't they won't care. People now they, they just panic because it's two weeks into the season and you know he's not hitting the ball like he normally does. But in his track record, give him 500 at bats, he's going to end up with 25 around 30 home runs and drive in some runs. The real question I have is where will Michael Brantley and, and Santana hit come Monday or Tuesday of next week? If this first and second, <laughs> I'm telling. I've Kip. talked to Tito. Oh, no, you already <laughs> talked to him. Huh? Hey, I brought up to Tito about him DH, and he goes, "I told you you don't need to run the lead to hit lead off." Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what. It, the game can change. You see, nowadays people talk about where the lineup has to stay the same, and you know what? In the days, sometimes managers used to move hitters all over the place. There's no one set spot you can you can hit in. The the guys that are swinging the bats the best should get more at bats. There's Corey nothing Kluber wrong with moving them. Strikes out Justin Upton. That's his fourth K here this afternoon. One down. The other thing, guys, that we should mention in all of this. Is it Terry Francona didn't just haphazardly waltz into his office and say, you know, I think I'm going to bat Santana yeah. leadoff today. I mean, he's thought a lot about this. I told you he mentioned it in spring training. Yeah. And Mike Chernoff, who's the tribe general manager, said Terry's gone around and he's gotten input from a lot of different people on this. So he didn't just wake up yesterday and say, I'm going to bat Santana leadoff. He, he talked to a lot of different people. And, and while on the surface it may make you scratch your head, like, Santana? Really? You're going to bat right. him leadoff? No, oh, hey, there's nothing wrong. And and I think, A, he takes a lot of pitches. He can work the count. So there, there were a lot of things that went into the decision. And he's probably not going to stay there the rest of the year. And, and the thing about it is that he talks to all the players, too, before he even does any of this stuff. So they know going in. Rajay Davis takes care of that ball off the bat of Miguel Cabrera. And there are two quick outs here in the fourth. Yeah, Terry very much gets the input from the guys in that clubhouse. So the as communication is always all open. managers do. You have to. Uh, right. You can't all rule with an iron fist that. anymore. We've, we've talked about that. It doesn't work. And no, the name of the game is communication. 
Look, it's a long year. It's 162 games. You're, you're going to have different lineups. But if you can have a set lineup, I think most managers would prefer it. But not everybody's fortunate enough to be, to be like that. And it should also be pointed out because this gets a lot of play in the media nowadays that, that analytics somehow has overtaken and runs the game. And Mike Chernoff said, look, Terry Francona makes out the lineup. He said, you know, he gets input. He asks questions. We all maybe put our two cents in. But at the end of the day, it's his decision on who he wants to bat where in the batting line. Yeah. Yep. Well, my question would be to Tigers fans, if they're upset, who do you want to hit second if, if you don't hit up there? And I'm looking through their lineup. Give me another guy. <laughs> he looks pretty good in that number two hole. Unless you want to lead him off and hit Kinsler second, which is crazy. Yeah, the other thing is, is he can run a little bit, too. I mean, I would say, okay, maybe would you want to bat Castellano second and move up and down into a more of an RBI spot? I, that'd be the only thing potentially I could see maybe you'd want to tinker with. Yeah, but when you put him down there, who's, who's backing him up? Who's hitting behind him where he won't walk a lot? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. You know? He's just striking out too much right now, that's all. Victor Martinez never strikes out. Once every 17 at bats this year. And that's Let's see if he tries to hit it into the teeth of the defense or goes the other way. There was a pitch to go the other way. They're giving him the whole shortstop hole to third base on the ground. Now the 2-2. Just missed. And not by a whole lot. That's but the again, one that was a pitch where he could have slapped it the other way yeah, and had that's, a base hit. That's the pitch cutter where uh, left-handers give up on sometimes, but it was away. It was probably six inches outside, if not more. Now the payoff. Swung out and missed. He struck him out. Corey Kluber nails here in the fourth inning. Retires the side in order for the second time today. He has struck out five. is brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. And by T-Mobile, get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. First pitch to Lottie Chisenhall in for a strike. 
fifth inning here at Comerica Park. Indians on top, eight to nothing. Chisenhall tripled and scored in the third. He hammered the ball to the right center field gap. Foul right back. Bonnie lifts the ball to left field. In comes Upton. And he has that for out number one. In game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. And after the Indians. Got rolling in the first inning on a Jan Gomes two-out RBI hit. Jose Ramirez added one. And then Gomes came up in the third with a three-run homer. And Carlos Santana kept pouring it on for the try. Indians with three in the first and then five in the third. And in that five-run outburst in the third inning, they piled up seven hits. You know, sometimes you see a big inning and it's aided by some walks and a bunch of errors. That was just the Indians putting pretty good swings on the baseball. Well, and after the first three hitters, like you say, you get a base hit, base hit, three run homer. It sort of fizzles after that because normally they don't yeah. add on. You know, you clear all the base runners and they get back to it, but they continue to hit the ball. Rajay Davis pops one foul right side. That'll get down near the seats. I mean, you watch the, the, the assortment of hits. They hit it all over the ballpark, and they were starting to hit it hard that inning. The first inning, they had a few bloops go in, but not that inning. They had the extra base hits. They hit for the cycle in the third inning. They had uh, a few singles, a couple of doubles, a triple, and a home run. Davis takes it in the dirt. Now the 2 2. And Rajay bounces it to second base. Two down. While Major League Baseball's global reach seems to be greater than ever, Cuba is still one country that's outside that reach. Watch our special documentary, Cuba, Baseball's Final Frontier, tomorrow at noon on Sports Time Ohio. Two down for Tyler Naquin, who doubled and scored in that third inning. And he's now picked up a hit in five straight games. Right back to the screen. Yeah, this was the first hitter that Kyle Ryan came on to face, and Naquin promptly hit a double deep to left field. Cuts and misses. A one ball, two strike count. Pops it up, foul, that's going to find its way into the seat. Slow curveball, Nakewood bangs it to second base. Kinsler has it, and the Indians go one, two, three. Halfway through, and the Indians are all over the Tigers today, eight to nothing.
$10 for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. And kids' tickets are located in the family deck at Progressive Field, home to the expanded Kids Clubhouse. Kids' tickets are only available at Indians.com. Well, Corey Kluber has gone out, and, and this is one of those almost like a, a chicken or the egg thing. Is he going out because he's got the big lead and just slicing and dicing, or is he just one of those guys that doesn't care what the scoreboard is and he's going to pitch the same way every time? I think that's it. I think the latter. You do? Yeah. yeah it's just from watching him on every start year to year. It doesn't matter with him. It's just he's never been in this situation before, you know, or rarely in a, in a situation where you give him more than four runs. They showed you the number earlier when they get him four runs, what his record is. Uh, so I, I don't think it matters to him. And what happens when you're aggressive, the opposing opposition the offense you know, they want it. They're just looking for a pitch to hit. You know, to, to come back from eight runs is tough to do. You look for something to hit, they get aggressive, they'll make some early outs. So he could have some quick innings, I would think, the rest of this way. And there's a quick out. J.D. Martinez goes down swinging. That's six strikeouts now for Corey Kluber. I mean, when you look at his strikeouts, there it is, a little cutter on the inside part of the plate. Two seam fastball, another good fastball. They're coming right in there, swinging and missing, and he's slicing and dicing. But I mean, this is Corey. He's he's on the edges. He's mixing his pitches well. Hasn't walked anybody, and he will remain aggressive. This is his 106th major league start. All with the Cleveland Indians. Twelve times the Indians have scored eight runs for Kluber. Okay. Three times last year. So it's not that it's not like they've never done it. Well, but it's we're pretty used to pretty seeing rare. him. You know, it seems like he's been the guy. And and every team has a pitcher that never gets offense, maybe for a year. Hopefully it doesn't last too long. But in his first three starts, they only scored him three runs. But, you know, you get sick of talking about that after a while. Sooner or later, you got to go out. And if you're Kluber, you got to figure to yourself, hey, I got to pitch a shutout and beat him one to nothing. Now the one, two. And that's low. Two balls, two strikes. Nick Castellanos grounded into an inning ending double play back in the second. And he waves at a ball low and away for strikeout number seven for Corey Kluber. Our great clip of the game from last night featured, featured some terrific pitching by Josh Tomlin. Tomlin went six and two thirds, gave up one run on four hits, walked one and struck out four. Only 85 pitches in those six and two thirds innings of work. And that's, that's the impressive number right there. Every time the Indians lose, you sent Tomlin out there, and it's like, well, that's it's automatic. Over. Yeah. I mean, that's there's something to be said for that. I mean, if guys that threw 95, 96, think about what uh, Josh Tomlin would be like with his mentality and, and his, his guts and his guile with 95, 96 and stuff like that. And he goes out there at 92 and he pitches. You'd be talking about an elite starting pitcher. You would think so. You know, you're, I know he's not left-handed, but you'd be talking Clayton Kershaw, Madison Bumgarner. I mean, th those kind of guys who are at the top of the head of the class. The 2-1. Hit well. Salto Lamacchia sends one deep to the seats. 
His team leading sixth home run of the year. Came in tied for fifth in the American League in the home run category. And it gets the Tigers on the board with two outs in the fifth inning. Well, Saul Tillamacchia, I mean, he's having a, so far a nice start for the Tigers. He gets a ball down in his zone that he likes. Let's see what the pitch is. It's down and in. So that's his nitro zone. He gets it into the seats. He gets the Tigers on the board, and it's only their second hit. Andrew Romine reached on an error his first time up in the third. Up the middle. Diving stop by Lindor gets up and throws, and Napoli with a tremendous backhanded pick to end the inning. Oh, a spectacular play by Francisco Lindor, robbing Romine of a base hit to end the fifth. to Tribe Rewards. Today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Bauer. Just visit Indians.com. Season tickets for complete details. Santana looks, it's down low, ball one. Santana in his first ever plate appearance in a leadoff hitting role, hit a home run last night. And as he rounded first base, Sandy Alomar said to him, who do you think you are, Ricky Henderson? <laughs> Santana got a kick out of that. Well, I'll tell you what, he's got four hits coming out of that spot, and uh, he's got to be back in there tomorrow. change a winning formula. Carlos in his career 15 homers now 41 oh, RBI man. against the Tigers. This was last night on a 3 2 pitch. Yeah. He got Justin Verlander. He sure did. One swing of the bat they had a lead. They scored again uh, in the first inning today and that always bodes well for the Indians. Big hopper to third Castellanos will throw him out and interesting to point out that today Santana leading off the game swung at the first pitch and hit a fly ball out to left field and you're thinking oh man against a guy like Sanchez where you want to make him work one pitch one out to start the game that that's probably not a good sign. Who knew he would end up making over 30 pitches in that first inning. 
You got Santana on one, but had trouble the rest of that inning. The Indians would touch him for three and then knocked him out in the third inning. Yeah, because the, the very next guy came up and got a base hit after going deep into the count. Kipnis. And Jason Kipnis rolls it over to Kinsler for route number two. Hey, speaking of pitching and really good pitching, Tanner Rourke of the Washington Nationals in six innings against the Minnesota Twins today has struck out 14 batters. Are you kidding me? There's the play by Lindor that ended last inning. Ranging to his left, making a diving stop, thought it was a base hit, gets up, makes the throw, and a nice pick by Napoli. First ball swinging, drives one to deep center, but Anthony goes, backpedals to make the catch. Indians go in order, but go to the bottom of the sixth. Eight one Cleveland. and include eight different plans. When you buy a prorated 20 game plan, you'll get up to 12 games for free. Visit Indians.com season tickets for more details. Anthony Goes will lead off for Detroit here in the bottom of the sixth, then top of the order, Kinsler and Upton. Anthony goes 0 for his last eight at the plate. And Kluber just missing 2 and 0. Fouls that one off of his leg. You know, I was just kind of thinking, Rick, what makes baseball so unique and different from the other sports that we watch and love? In a game like today in particular, you get behind early like the Tigers do in a big hole like that. You know, in basketball, you get down early. You're still going to get plenty of opportunities to score because the ball's in your hands. 
In football, you're still going to get possessions because the ball is in your hands. You get a chance to score points. Baseball, though, because the pitcher's got the ball, if you get behind early, it's tough sometimes, especially against a good pitcher like a Corey Kluber. Now, there are times when a pitcher doesn't have his game and he is not on it, maybe lets a team right back into it. But if he's on his game and you get behind early, it's almost impossible. It's very, very difficult. Baseball's the only sport that I know of. If anybody knows anything, tell me that when you have the object of the game, you're on defense instead of offense. Yeah. Another strikeout for Corey. Boy, he is just he is just quietly, I mean quietly mowing him down today. That's his eighth strikeout of the afternoon. Well, look at the look at the movement on his two seamer right there coming in and, uh, and another one. You know, and they swing through it. Now a slider to Victor. Has him out in front. You know, the ball's going both ways. It's going down. It's going here. He, he Both sides of the plate. When a hitter has to cover 17 inches and then look for more than one or two different pitches, you're in trouble. Kensler just went after the first pitch, popped it up. Routine play for Chisholm, all two down. See, that's what I'm saying. When, when, when it, you get a team down like the veteran hitters, they're just looking for first pitch. Let me put it in play. I don't want to get they embarrassed. Don't wanna, uh, right. And with strikeouts, let me just put it in play. If you're around the plate, I'm going to swing. He'll have some, uh, some quick innings. Trying to retire the side in order for the third time today. He has struck out Justin Upton both times in the ballgame. So... Based on your theory, I'd expect Upton to be looking for something early to get after. But the thing of it is, he doesn't really have a track record against Kluber because he's coming over from the National League, so he's still maybe just trying to find a way to pick, to pick mm -hmm. him up and figuring out what he's going to throw. And he blew a fastball right by him. It's 0-2. But don't worry about it. Justin because there's a lot of hitters in this league that know him that can't hit him. Think about the Cardinals last year. Didn't you know don't see him very right. often. 18 punch and he just carved him up that day for his first win of the season. That was on May 13th last year. And he went out in that game and carved him up in what was it a two to one. I was going to say I think it was still a two yeah. to one. Yeah he won two to one. Up then following See, it there's back. a breaking ball that he had a chance to hit because he hung it, but he fouled it off. You know, the, here again, too, when we talk about it, that's where pitchers sometimes gives hitters so many, too much credit to where you're afraid to make a mistake instead of letting them. There's times when you can throw a ball down the middle, they pop it up and they miss it or they, they do something, crack their bat and... Yeah. You're, you're going, I can't believe it when you're going good. When you're going bad, you can make a good pitch on the outside corner. They bloop it in or they do something like that. It's just different. It's a tough thing to do to hit a baseball. And, and your job as a hitter is just to try and put it in play and hit it hard somewhere. You can't guide it. Sometimes you get lucky up there. The 2-2. Two -two. Just missed in a full count. I think part of the problem is is high definition, all of the video angles we have, and the really good players make it look really easy sometimes. Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> you see those pretty swings on a ball that is right down the middle, and you think, well, I can't believe they don't do that every single time. Yeah. Swung on and missed. Corey Kluber with his ninth strikeout of the afternoon. And after six, the Indians lead it eight to one.
Baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And by Ford, built Ford tough. Indians on top by a score of eight to one. As we head now to the seventh inning on a beautiful sunny day in the Motor City. This is one of those spring days that when you're in the sun, it feels fine, and when you're in yeah. the shade, it feels like a completely different yeah, world. Another 10 degrees would, would do wonders. A little bit low to Mike Napoli, who singled and scored back in the third, but the folks out in the sunshine, they're enjoying it. Temperature still only 54 degrees. I think tomorrow is supposed to hit up into the 60s. Napoli shoots one in the left field, his second hit of the afternoon. Tell you one thing, Rick, Kyle Ryan's done a terrific job. I wasn't sure if he was going to really be on in long relief, but he's gone three plus innings now. Yeah, he's done a good job for him. As promised earlier, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Light. Jan Gomes with a two out RBI knock, driving in a run in the first, and then the three run Jack in the third. Told you at the outset of our telecast, he came in with a career 289 batting average against the Tigers. And he's lived up to that here today. I want to send along a uh, special happy birthday wish. Marie Hostetler, who is 99 and a half. Today's April 23rd. Her birthday's not till October 23rd. Oh, and we're not going to be televised. So, Marie, we got to wish you a happy birthday. Half birthday, 99 and a half. <laughs> Happy birthday. Have half you. a birthday cake. <laughs> That's right. And eat it all. Why not? That's awesome. Down low, a nice pick by Salta Lamacchia to keep Napoli at first. I wonder if that ball even went in the dirt because he threw it back and they didn't hand it back to the umpire. It sure looked like it from our angle. By the way, I was talking about Kyle Ryan. And after he got the final out. Oh, there's a knock down the left field line. Jan Gomes has himself a three-hit day. Napoli coming around third. They're going to wave him home. Jan Gomes has driven in five runs this afternoon as the Indians increase their lead to 9-1. to one. Well, you live dangerously when you throw a pitch down to Jan Gomes, who loves it down there. And that ball got down in the corner and wasn't dug out enough quick enough. You see where that ball was? And, I mean, he puts a good swing on it and hits it down the line. Napoli had a good jump off of first base, and by the time he got stuck in the corner is what happened. I didn't think he was going to be able to score originally, but he scores. And Gomes, what an afternoon, five RBIs. Five stakes out there, baby. How about this? Kyle Ryan came into the game. He gave up two hits to the first two hitters he faced, then walked the batter, then retired ten in a row, and then gave up hits to the last two guys he faced. Yeah, probably extended Ran out him of gas, a little, maybe. Yeah, a little too long, exactly. <laughs> We've got a timeout for a pitching change. Indians on top by eight.
in the seventh inning. New Tiger pitcher is right-hander Alex Wilson making his third appearance of the year. And Jose Ramirez, one for three on the day, will bat. Jose had a two-out RBI hit in the first and robbed of a hit his last time up. A beautiful diving catch in center field by Anthony Ghost. The five runs batted in for Jan Gomes today ties his career best. Remember last year he had that game in August against the Angels. He hit the grand slam off Joe Smith. That gave him a five RBI game. But today seems more impressive when you scatter the RBIs out over a bunch of different hits. Yeah, Gomer's a triple away from the cycle. Jose Ramirez comes up empty and it's one and two. Jose hits a high drive deep right center. Back goes J.D. Martinez. Still going back and makes the catch. A long way from home plate. Tagging and going to third is Jan Gomes. One away. Today's injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Michael Brantley played last night in Columbus. And he'll play again today, so that'll make it the back-to-back -back games we want to see him play. And if all goes well, he comes through with flying colors, feels good tomorrow. Maybe we'll see him in Minneapolis. Yeah, let's hope so. Let it, let's hope so. Infield in with Lonnie Chisenhall at the plate. Runner at third, one out, and the pitch in for a strike. Oh. Lonnie Chisenhall crunched a triple to right and scored in the third inning. And that was the hit that Reignited the offense after the three run homer by Jan Gomes. Pops this one's up in the shallow, not even in the left field. It'll be the shortstop Romine. Two down. And that'll bring up Rajay Davis, who the former Tiger is one for three with an RBI single back in the third inning. Extending his hitting streak to eight games. Swung on and missed by Davis. Right back. One ball and two strikes. Well, Tanner Rourke only struck out one batter in the seventh inning, so he's got 15 Ks in seven innings of shutout baseball against the Twins. He's allowed just two hits. And the Nationals, who scored two in the first, still lead it two to nothing in the bottom of the seventh. Davis with his second RBI hit of the afternoon. Look at him go. And Look he's going go. for two, and the throw is not him. in time. He's got a hustle two-out double in addition to the RBI. You know, I, that that was exciting. I know the score. It's 9-1, to one and he hit that <laughs> ball, and he broke out of the batter's box, and he was looking for two right from the get-go. And another nice two-out base hit, and good for him. You hustle your way, get yourself another double. Get an RBI. Watch it. 
That's where they're made folks right out of the batter's box. He didn't hesitate. He made up his mind. The score is in your favor. Go ahead and do it. So another RBI for Davis. This time a hustle double. I love to see it. That's not one of those odd uh, unwritten rules. Nope. That you nope. You you do it on your own. What are you supposed to just jog to first base and look like an idiot? <laughs> no. You just put a kick it in gear. You know what? If they don't want to hustle and try and grab the ball and throw it, they look bad, not you. You look good doing it. I like it. There's no but there's no more unwritten rules. Let's go. 10-1. <laughs> the Indians lead it with two down. No, it's like stealing bases or something like that. Yes. Hustling out of the batter's box. No. And especially when you know he does it that way every single time. That's right. That's that's his. Th and you know what? He played in this ballpark and with the Tigers for the last few years. So why not? He's showing them. Hey, here I am. Naquin drills one to deep center. Goes is flying back. He makes a running catch. Oh, I'll tell you one Wrong thing. Wrong ballpark to hit it in, Tyler. That was a terrific job by Goes, who got a beautiful jump and on a dead sprint, straight back, steals a hit and a ribby away from Tyler Naquin. But Jan Gomes has driven in five today, and the Indians lead it by nine. Dugout. <laughs> April in the OH continues tomorrow as both Cleveland teams are, will be right here in the Motor City. The Indians take on the Tigers at 12:30 on Sports Time Ohio. Then later, Cavs Pistons. Game four of the NBA playoffs on Fox Sports Ohio at eight. April in the OH presented by Meyer. Fastball in there for strike one to Miguel Cabrera. And an eight up Lindor who went down, gets up, throws, got him! <laughs> oh, baby! Lindor knocked to the seat of his pants, but he would not be denied, and now he can't believe it. <laughs> that ball was hit so hard, it literally knocked him back. And he had the presence to get up and fire his seat and retire Cabrera. I'm sure he'll have something to say to him at first base at some point in time, either the rest of this game or tomorrow. 
<laughs> oh, do the victors go the spoils, and the Indians are having some fun here today. Now, usually I mark down stars on really look good at, plays. Look at, look I don't at, know if the, we should mark down a star. Look at, look at they're talking right now. They're going on right now. The Brewer is saying stuff, something to him from the dugout. <laughs> Lindor's probably thinking, I just got my revenge for falling down after yep. my first major league hit. <laughs> I thought there is something. <laughs> There's something to it. It's the first time he had to run down the line. He wanted that base hit because he's struggling. Well, I was going to say, Mickey might not be in the joking mood. He's 0 for his last 12. Well, that's right. And that's when you joke with him. And he doesn't have many 0 for 12s. Now we've got four batting titles in your den. Victor Martinez has flied out, struck out. And that's saying something because this guy is one of the toughest, if not the very hardest hitters to strike out. A little bit high, three and one, and Kluber checking his footing. Victor recently picked up his 1,000th career RBI. Just the fifth Venezuelan born player to accomplish that feat. He clobbers this one deep to right, but Chisenhall is there and makes the catch just shy of the warning track. Two down. So this goes back to last year. Here's the first major league hit by Francisco Lindor. And if you missed it, he rounded first base and lost his footing and tumbled. <laughs> then he's pointed at Cabrera, and Cabrera said, What do you mean? I didn't do anything. And now here today, Cabrera knocks him backwards, but Lindor gets up and throws him out. Fire to see, and you know, he gets the last laugh. That was a ball hit right on the nose. He had no chance. You either catch it or that would have put a hole in his chest. It would have caught him. Grounded foul, third base side. Look at this. <laughs> on the money, we're close enough to it. You know, that's the other thing too about that plate. We see guys dive to their left, dive to their right, come charging in. Have you ever seen a guy go backwards, go back on his back like that and still get up and make a play? No. Uh, the right guy was running, and no, it's, it's a rarity. Watch. Directly. He couldn't get out of the way. I want to see with, with how fast the, the, the yeah, ball came the off the bat. Yeah, where's the stat cast on that? Do we have that information, guys? No, I don't think so. Here's the pitch, it's up high, and it's one and one. <laughs> Hold on, let me get my stopwatch. I'm going to do it at the next break. We'll time it when it goes off the bat and into his glove. Can't we call into NASA and get that information? The one, two, swung on and missed. Corey Kluber with another double digit strikeout performance. His 10th strikeout of the afternoon. Kluber continues to mow him down.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Carlos Santana going to lead off once again for the Indians here in the eighth inning with the Tribe in front, 10-1. Tigers have made some changes defensively. We got a new catcher, new first baseman, new second baseman, new left fielder. Jared Saltalamacchia has moved from behind the plate over to first base. Bobby Wilson now behind the dish. Our old pal Mike Avilas is in the ball game. He's at second base for Ian Kinsler. And the left fielder is now Tyler Collins. There's Mike. Santana smokes it deep right, but foul. Ooh. There's Tyler Collins, who took over for J uh, Justin Upton out in left field. In the dirt. I don't know if Carlos Santana is going to stay in the leadoff spot or for how long, but it certainly seems to have gotten him going because he was really scuffling at the plate coming into this series. But as you pointed out, Rick, he's got four hits now in two games. Yeah, I think he'll be right back in there tomorrow. Well, you have to, man. Look at the look at the offense today. 14 hits, 10 runs. Even though yesterday was a 2-1, you know, close one-run ball game, he'll be. I, don't see why not. Fouled it off. Hard hit ball to first, but Salta Lamacchia will take it himself. One away. Well, every starter for the Indians had a hit in this game by the third inning. Yeah, that's a rarity. But that's uh, it's been a while since we've been able to do that. A lot of crooked numbers. Jason Kipnis looks at the ball in the dirt. We're in the eighth with the Indians on top, 10 to 1. I know a lot of fans showed their support last year to Mike Avilas and his family while his daughter Adriana went through. Uh, treatments as she battled a children's form of leukemia, and he certainly appreciated all of the well wishes and the support. And when he got to spring training this year, he, he let it be known that Adriana is cancer free. What a tremendous, it's, it's so nice to hear a happy ending once in a while because so many of these stories don't end that way. Yeah, so true. Now the one two upstairs. Kipnis singled and scored in that first. He's also walked today. Gives him uh, 13 hits now in his last 12 games played. He's kind of steady as she goes for the Indian second baseman. He's got another one. Beautiful. Line drive, base hit to left. 
you know, today's a, is a game. You know, Jason Kipnis and Francisco Lindor and Mike Napoli, they can't drive in the runs every single game. You, you need other people to contribute, and today they got those contributions from Jan Gomes and from Jose Ramirez and Rajay Davis. Well, that's what happens when other people are on, and, you know, I like to see what we're doing right here. Even though it's a blowout, you don't see guys giving up at bats. That that hit going the other way, it's easy. Santana got up there and tried to pull. He wanted to hit a home run. He already had his two hits. But it's nice to see him still working the count and, and taking the pitch and doing the things to it makes a huge difference over the year when you when you get into games like this, whether you're winning or you're losing, it's easy to give up at bats. And uh, you know, and the little things like that can get you in slumps. Or the little things like that can keep you rolling and get you hot. Well, the Indians have had a lot of fun with the bats today. 15 hits. And a foul by Lindor. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Yeah, they. Uh, so far, 14 was their high. So today is their high for hits in a ball game in a nine inning game. Lindor might have chased one up out of the strike zone. That's the first strikeout by an Indians hitter since the second inning and only the third on the day. Well, the $13 district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio is back and includes your first drink. You can grab some friends and catch a game from the corner out in right field or the new drink rails out in left field. District tickets only available online at Indians.com. Well, after getting two outs here in the eighth, Alex Wilson's day is over. We've got a new pitcher coming in from Detroit when we come back. Day. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Surfrider Foundation in celebration of this month's Every Day is Earth Day initiative. By making simple changes in our daily lives, we can make a big impact on our environment. Go to foxsportssupports.com to learn more about what you can do to be part of the solution. Mike Napoli takes ball one from left-hander Blaine Hardy. Fourth pitcher of the afternoon 
for Detroit. Napoli, two for four, two singles, two runs scored. Just the second appearance this year for this Tiger left-hander. They have three southpaws in their bullpen. Down low. Didn't chase the breaking ball. Sends a ground ball up the middle, and the inning is over. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth in Detroit. It's the Indians 10 and the Tigers 1. As we roll to the eighth inning, Corey Kluber for the 22nd time in his career has struck out 10 batters or more in a game. He's right at 10 this afternoon as he starts the eighth inning. He's done it with an assortment of pitches. Yeah, and he's been uh, locked in using both sides of the plate, using all of his pitches, and he, he, he's been in total control. And certainly it started out well for him because the offense, they scored for him early and off. So he's going into the eighth, allowing just two hits, the one run. He allowed a solo home run back in the fifth inning. And he's at 93 pitches right now. Castellanos goes after that pitch and fouls it off one and one. Dan Otero, right hander getting loose for the Indians. Fly ball to center field. Naquin has a long run to it and makes the catch on the warning track for out number one. Francisco Lindor defensively. This was a sensational play earlier in the ball game, and then this one later 
This ball was hit at 102.6 miles an hour off the bat of Miguel Cabrera. But Lindor stayed with it, even though it knocked him to the seat of his pants. <laughs> he got up and made the play. Uh, you talk about having fun. Enjoying yourself out there, that's, that's great. He is a good shortstop. Our man Mark Koha down on the truck, he somehow he did the calculations on that. Came up with a 102.6. He guessed. Maybe that was the radio station he was <laughs> listening to. I think it was. Dan Otero getting loose as Kluber closes in on 100 pitches for the day. But again, it, this is one of those outings where it's not the pitch count, it's the fact that he really hasn't been in any stress at all because the Indians scored three before he threw a pitch. And by the third, it was seven to nothing. Eight to nothing, and he's just been able to go out there and pitch free and easy. Yes, he has, and uh, get your work in, and it'll be win number one for him. Salta Lamakia took him deep for the only run for Detroit today. That was back in the fifth inning. Yeah, he made a, made a mistake and threw him a fastball down and in, right into his nitro zone. It's this one off the end of the bat. And Chisholm Hall will make the catch. Two down. Now, last night, if you missed this, watch this throw by Yasiel Pui. Misses the ball at the top of the wall. Story of Colorado's going for three. Oh, man. It was like a rainbow. It was right on the money. 310 feet. Yeah. Unbelievable. But you think about outfielders, normally that line drive throw to the cutoff man or near the cutoff man, he launched that thing into the stratosphere and it just dropped out of the heavens right into the glove and on the money. And that story, Trevor Story, he can run. No, he, he's quick. Not quick enough, though, to outrun Yasiel Puig. Corey Kluber finishes strong here today, retiring the last 10 batters in a row. All right, boys, thank you, Jensen. I'll tell you what, I love the offense. When they come out in the top half of the first inning, put three runs on the board, and you got Corey Kluber on the mound, it's a lot of fun. And you can tell what happened. And then they didn't stop there. They continued to add on. 
And uh, Kluber just did his thing. I'm sure he's probably going to be done right now, but that's fine. This guy, Jan Gomes, has had a wonderful afternoon. Yes, he has, tying his career high with five runs batted in. Sky high pop, maybe playable here. Castellanos, he reached in but couldn't quite get to it. Our Pat O'Brien play of the game back in the third. Three run, a three pointer. Too bad Austin wasn't here to see that one. Yeah, step behind the line and uh, shoot it. And he sure did. That was uh, a breaking ball down in his uh, spot that he likes to, to, he likes the ball down in the zone. Gomes flies this one to center and goes. Wrong spot. Makes the catch. We've seen a number of balls uh, today out there. I think Lindor hit one out there. Uh, Nate went hit one out there. And now Gomes. Center fielders make their money throwing those balls back in. A lot of room out here in center field at Comerica Park. Well, Monday we'll be in Minneapolis to take on the Twins at Target Field. And that will be the Twins' uh, first game home since the death of music icon Prince. And uh, the Twins are going to wear purple wristbands. Are they? They wore them Friday, but they're going to break them out Monday. And every player is going to walk up their walk-up song. Everybody's going to choose a Prince song okay. for their walk-up. That'll be cool. It's going to be pretty cool. Very much so. Brian Dozier's already picked Purple Rain. Joe Maurer's going to go with Raspberry Beret. We'll have to wait to see what uh, everybody else picks so up. So they've already made it public what they're going to be doing. Yeah. I mean, as far as picking their songs. High pop, left field. Collins. Will make the catch, and Jose Ramirez is out number two. Lonnie Chisnall, one out of four. He tripled and scored in the third. Swing and a miss. And Blaine, Blaine Hardy gets ahead one and two. A little bit too tall. High pop, shallow center, out goes Romine. In comes Goes, and the center fielder makes the catch. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth here in Detroit, 10-1 Cleveland.
brought to you by Mazda. They wanted to make Sanchez work, get that pitch count up. He was out after 60 pitches and just two and a third innings of work today. And Corey Kluber was brilliant again. The 22nd career 10 strikeout game, but the fifth time he's done it without walking a batter. Yeah, that, that was impressive. He had it working today, and I'm just happy to. The offense scored him some runs today. Gave him an opportunity to go out there and relax, get that first win. That's always nice. You know, Lord knows what his record is when he gets four runs of support. He showed you earlier. Now, Redbird also said that that stat we just showed you, the five times, ten strikeouts, no walks, that's the most in franchise history. Because I guess it makes sense when you think about guys who are normally big strikeout pitchers. He usually walk a guy here there. Yeah. yeah. Anthony goes leading off the bottom of the ninth as Dan Otero tries to get the final three outs. Swung on and missed. Shoots it foul the other way. Well, it's been a while since Danny has pitched in a ball game. His last game coming against the Mets on the 17th of April. Two, two, swung on and missed. He strikes him out. You know, I I, uh, I said last inning, Rick, that when Francisco Lindor struck out, it was only the third strikeout of the game for Indians hitters. That comes after last night's game, and while they won, they struck out 12 times. Justin Verlander was really good last night, but what a difference! About 12 hours can make. Yeah, Sanchez, uh, he didn't have it today. His stuff was flat, his change up. Left some pitches up, and the Indians took advantage of it. Tomorrow's series finale features Carlos Carrasco and Shane Green matching up, and we'll have it for you at 1 o'clock right here on Sports Time Ohio. Another big sports day in Cleveland. We'll have the Tribe and the Tigers series finale at 1, and then the Cavs go for a sweep of the Pistons tomorrow night. That game can be seen on Fox Sports Ohio. That's a late one tomorrow, is it? 8 o'clock? I think it is. I didn't see the exact yeah, game I time. I think it is 8 o'clock. 8.30 tip. Mercis. Okay. There it is. April in the OH. Brought to you by Meyer. Great day tomorrow. Been a great day. Great weekend to this point. Indians and Cavs both won last night. Indians following it up with a demolition derby display of offense here this afternoon. Out of play to the right. Some people in Detroit have speculated that it seems odd the Tigers have both Mike Avilas and Andrew Romine on the roster because they both sort of do the same thing. And 
Avila's little bloop shot toward third. Ramirez picks it, throws him out. One away. I mean, Romine last year started uh, 43 games. Uh, and they were split between shortstop, third base, second base, and first base. So, you know, that's kind of what Avilas does. He, he yeah. moves around, spells you at different spots. But Avilas, the difference, he played some outfield here for in Cleveland. Tyler Collins getting it at bat with two down here in the ninth. Ball back out of play. Justin Upton finished 0 for 3 and struck out all three times against Corey Kluber. Now he knows what everybody else has been talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess you have to get in that box and see it for yourself, but he saw it firsthand today. Thirty one thousand one hundred sixty three on hand here today on a sunny but cool afternoon in the Motor City. And while this has been a tough place to play for the tribe in recent years they have a chance now to sweep the three game series tomorrow. Collins down on strikes to end the ball game as the Indians tattoo the Tigers by a final count of 10 to 1. Corey Kluber gets that first win of the year. And the Indians go back over the 500 mark at 8 and 7 while dumping Detroit to 8 and 8. Anibal Sanchez takes the loss. He's 2 and 2 on the year. And this was a, just a fun afternoon as the Indians piled up 15 hits in the victory. Yeah, it was. You mentioned a lot of fun. And, uh, the offense started right from the first inning. They put three runs on the board, then allowed Kluber to go out there without even throwing a pitch with a lead. He could relax. I mean, they, they scored as many runs in the first inning as they have all year for him. They were able to add on often. They put a five runs on in the third, two runs on in the seventh, season high 10 runs, season high 15 hits. Uh, a great afternoon all the way around it, and a fun, like you say, a fun afternoon to where they could relax for once. Santana, Kipnis, Napoli, and Rajay Davis all had two hits today, but the big afternoon belonged to Jan Gomes, who went three for five with the home run and a career high tying five runs batted in. He'll be with Andre Knott when Indians Live comes your way straight ahead here on Sports Time Ohio. For Rick Manning and Andre, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. We're back with the series finale tomorrow at 1 right here on Sports Time Ohio.